come back and do what they were doing before. <laughs> Only this time, bigger and better, more powerful than ever, and, and, and warning people against taking the mark and the trip of the beast. Um, the whole world at, at that time, and when the Antichrist arrives as God, it's only going to be a matter of maybe one or two months at the most until the worldwide legislation forces everybody to be chipped. And we're seeing this now with the national ID card. And, and this is one of these things that has my eyebrows raised because the, the requirements for this national ID card is, uh, uh, you know, retinal eye scanning and fingerprinting. And John warned us of, you know, the forehead and the right hand. If you're putting your forehead up against that machine for the retinal scan, could that indeed be what he was seeing? And, and we don't know. And because uh, you're, you're putting it up against against your head. And also with the fingerprint, they want your right your right hand, your right right index finger. I mean, why can't they ask for the left? <laughs> you know, it would, it would clear up a lot of confusion, a lot of worries on the believers community uh, if they just went to the left hand and then didn't do the eye thing at all. Well, but you got to watch this stuff. You got to you got to watch it. It's be something that sneaks in the back door. Uh, that's what they have plans for on this national ID card, and and this whole thing was supposed to be set by 2007, and here it's 2005, and, and you know, then I know their goal was in 2007 that would be completely mandatory, and, and things are moving a lot quicker, if you'll notice. <laughs> things seem to be accelerating, They're speeding up a little bit, so keep an eye on that. Um, you know, pray about it, ask about this national ID card, the Lord tells you, I really don't know anything about it yet, uh, I have not heard anything direct from him, uh, know about the card itself, keeping my eye on it. But that could lead right into the chip. Um, you know, like I said, our country, uh, for the last 15, 20 years, uh said this before, has been going through small countries, small island nations throughout the world and exp deposing their governments and, and planting their own leaders in them. And, of course, uh, they use it under the terms of freedom and peace. <laughs> it's like... It's like always watch out for the next peace initiative, the next peace initiative from the New World Order, because it's pure tyranny, and uh, and that's what they've been doing. And the reason they're doing it is to solidify this one world global control of a government, one world global government. And all of the people, when the Antichrist comes, are going to be under his subjection and rule, and will be forced to get this right, uh, this chip on the right hand or forehead, either on or in. Why argue? I mean, some people say it's on. Other translations say it's in. Just stay away from it altogether. <laughs> you know, don't argue about whether it's on or in. Just don't go anything near that touches your right hand <laughs> or your forehead. Stay away from it altogether. You know, I, I, I've heard, you know, because that's one of the beast prophet's tools, and I know it's coming, and that's why I'm trying to warn you ahead of time. Because what they're going to say is, well, the Bible says it's in, and this thing is on. <laughs> Who cares? Just stay away from it. You know, let's, let's expose their tactics before they even start. Uh, <laughs> because, because they're trying to deceive you now. You know, Pat Robertson had on the president of Digital Angel and just went on and on about the benefits and praises of this chip. Well, then fine. Put it on my foot. <laughs> you know, don't go near your right hand or your forehead. Uh, you know, so <laughs> this whole thing, going out to New World Order, solidifying the whole world under one government global control and you've got all these different factions these luciferian factions and their little private societies and these little satan worshiping freaks that sit around and drink blood and do rituals and, and they're fighting for control you've got the rock the rockefellers and the rock, you know the rothschilds in factions one and two and you got the alien agenda in three and you know everybody's fighting against everybody else because they think they'll be the ones that are going to be allowed to be in control of power when Lucifer comes. And it's almost funny. It's almost amusing. Uh, but you know what? When a dictator rises to power, what's the first thing he does? You know, if you look back through history, what they do is kill off their competition, and they kill off all the people that put them into power so that those people can't backstab them, turn around, work behind them, and put somebody else in power. <laughs> so it's a no brainer here. Uh, and it's the same thing they've been saying. They have no use for humans once they rise to power. 
so all these little stupid humans now that fell for the Satan's lies, uh, every single person in these secret societies and our government that have fallen for his lies are going to be eliminated uh, the second he gets into power. He has no use for them. And, and that's why, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, the trains have been running since 9-11, but most of it has been government bureaucrat employees because they get rid of their own first. They don't want anybody talking. They gotta, you know, they gotta secure all the loose ends. You know, we've had pilots seeing uh, people lined up uh, to get on trains at, at camps, and this was right after 9/11. And these weren't uh, the Arabs that they had rounded up and arrested. These were government employees. And you know, so this, any one of these, you know, these stupid people that think Satan's gonna keep his promises to them. I mean, he, that's why he's called the father of lies. Because <laughs> he lies, <laughs> and he's very good at it, very good at it. I mean, he's got all these people sell their souls to him for wealth and fame and power, uh, just so when they think it's going to matter most, and they're going to be able to to rule the world. He's going to sweep the rug out right out from underneath them. And I'll tell you what, they're going to be in the same holding pens and the cages <laughs> that they're going to find the dissidents in. I mean, it's. It's really, I mean, if there's any kind of justice, there is some coming. Um, but needless to say, there's still going to be millions and millions of people that are killed and sacrificed because of this hand, these handful of, of Satan freaks. You know, they've caused the millions and you know, deaths of millions and millions of people not because they were hoodwinked, too. They thought it would give them everything that they wanted, immortality and, and power and everything, every other lie that Satan could sell them. To do what they're doing, you know, keep his promises, folks. He's not going to share his kingdom with anybody. You know, he's worked too long and hard for it, and then the aliens have them all played. <laughs> you know, <they're, laughs> why they would believe fallen angels? I mean, how many people do we have? That, you know, even on the internet today, they're talking about what friendly beings these <laughs> aliens are. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to post this thread I got. It's on my website now. It's at sherrytalkradio.com. You could go read it. You tell me how friendly they are when they just revealed their plans. <laughs> they plan on you know, whipping off about a million, millions, and they're, in their own words, millions of people that are going to be thrown in, in cages when they arrive and that it's already been planned and it's going to happen. So, so you tell me how friendly these beings plan on being. How any <laughs> how anybody could be so deceived? I mean, oh, you know, it's their own stupidity. Uh, but it's my job to sit here and sound the alarm, so that's what I do. You know, uh, I was talking about the hundred forty-four thousand. I mean, go on these rabbit trails. I got about ten minutes before the half break. Uh, Let's we'll talk about uh, who makes up what the Bible says makes up. Who makes up the first group of one hundred forty-four thousand people? Because if you're reading the Bible in Revelation chapter 7 and 14, there's two different groups of 144,000 identified. The church only teaches one group. You know, they've kind of put both chapters together and teach one group. Uh, but when you really get into the details and the nitty-gritty of those two chapters, you can tell that there's two different, two different groups. Uh, the first group is described uh, in chapter 14, verse 4, as those who are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with us wherever he goeth. These were redeemed from among, from among men, being the first fruits, meaning the first ones taken, unto God and to the Lamb. And this army is a mixture of men and women. They are virgins in the fact, this is a symbolic term, they were undefiled by the world's religious Jezebel system and spiritual adulteries. They weren't taken in by the, the horrors and the... And the Jezebels, and if they were in them, they got out. And so at that time, when he comes, they're not involved with the witchcrafts and idolatries of the church system today. They're, fine, they're found without guile. You know, feminine terms are often used in relation to spiritual terms. Uh, they were not defiled with women uh, as being religious whores and abominations. They were not involved with the religious whores and abominations, which today are the churches. Uh, and in their mouth was found no guile, and Strong's 